That's Mike. And that's Toya. And this, and this is, is Tech, Tech Beats, Beats and Bites. So, um, you know, every once in a while we get the honor of being invited to speak at other people's events. And this weekend I was re-invited. I normally don't get re-invited to a lot of places. Um, I wear my welcomes out very fast. <laughs> but I got re-invited to speak at the Black Professional Network Summit, also known as the BPN Summit. Also known as that summit that's held at FIU Covens in the middle of the summer, right around homecoming. You didn't really, every time you do your event, it's right around homecoming. Um, so I thought, since I was on the show, you returned a favor and you let people talk about their event. So we wanted to bring them to the show. So if you can, please welcome to the stage Kanasha and Brandon. Let's give them a round of applause. Yay! That's what I'm talking about. Support right. system on 10. Got a great team. <laughs> Always. So, um, could you guys give us a brief introduction while I get my beer? Go ahead. All right. Speaking to the mic. All right. My name is Kanasha Paul. I am the president of the Black Professionals Network and the founder of the Black Professionals Summit. Yeah. Brandon O'Pollaby, uh, CEO of Dibby Athletic Development. We promote excellence through athletics and then also the founder of Dibby A Dream. Uh, we help youth win at life through STEM programming, after school programming, and summer enrichment. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to go ahead and get right to the controversy since self born ain't here. Kanasha, uh -huh. your event Got it. is called Black Professional Networking Summit. Uh -huh. Does that mean you only expect black people to attend? Because I'm tired of people asking me that question when they are scared to come to your event. <laughs> can you clear that up for us right now so we can get that out of the way? No, um, non-black people are more than happy to attend. Um, we've had non-black presenters before. Um, we just, I just emphasize to them that they have to understand that the agenda is to empower this demographic that has historically not had access, not have been created a platform, that they haven't had the opportunity to showcase their brilliance and excellence amongst each other. Okay. I'm going to tell you why I address that. Um, to all the fellas that are here, all the men, if I can get your attention real quick, she'll, she'll still be there after you answer this question. If you are a man in the crowd, have you went to an event that supported women empowerment or have you went to an event that supported breast cancer? If you are a man and you have went to a, an event that was strictly for women or breast cancer, can you raise your hand? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, men don't have breasts, although some men can have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. A woman empowerment event or a woman's event is strictly geared towards women. Mm -hmm. An athletic platform is not just for athletes. It's for people that might want to be in shape. It's for right. mental wellness. It's almost a form of meditation for some. Right. Mm -hmm. Why is it when you put the word black on something, other people automatically feel excluded or, it, or if they can't come anymore? Or they can't show support. That's for both of y'all. Either one of y'all can answer that. <laughs> Go first. I think it's just we have to address that. I mean, because when you do Emerge Americas, a lot of people still come to Emerge Americas, and a lot of people there are not Hispanic. Or Hispanic size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hispanic size is mm -hmm. definitely not a whole bunch of Hispanic people. Got it. So why is it the stigma changes when you put the word black on something? Well, I think we just have to address that people are still uncomfortable with, you know, the black population. We, mm -hmm. it's just, it's not necessarily really an elephant in a room. It's just a fact that people want to dance around. Um, when we think about how people socialize, how they form relationships, how they form cliques, you naturally gravitate to people that um, have like-minded interests um, that you can connect with. And I feel like there's a lot of things in the black community that everyone relates to but because they see the color they see the, the people they just naturally feel like it's a us versus them thing which i find always frustrating because there's an asian american professional conference there's jewish federation conference like there is I, this is not new like i there's the latin builders associations have conferences like right. every every group has their silos that they empower one another but it only becomes 
a problem because it's black. Mm. So I always tell people, like, what you really are um, uncomfortable with is not that I'm empowering this group of people. You're uncomfortable with the fact that it's black people finally doing something for themselves. Mm. But let's dive a little deeper into that, too. Please do. Mm-hmm. Please do. For instance, when I was a part of the Young Professional Network, in the, in the mission it said for black professionals... But you have to be honest, all people who are black do not identify themselves as black. Mm -hmm. So it's just you have to dive deeper into that because you have to kind of keep, I guess, allowing people to come to the table and saying it's okay for you if you don't feel that you're black to attend this or if you don't feel that, you know, you're able to do whatever, you can attend this. But that that shouldn't be that way. It should say, okay, if we're black professional summit, that's we changed it to. Uh, diverse because even if we said minority, it says the same thing in mm-hmm. like, everyone else's mind because we don't want to just say, okay, just because you don't today identify as black, that doesn't mean you cannot join this. Mm. And I guess, and I'm sorry, Toya, but I wanted to bring it up because Kanasha, I know you have a much wider scope when it comes to your clientele, mm-hmm. but Brandon, you have a very diverse right. amount of clients. Right. And I just wanted to know Definitely, I, I wanted to bring it up because I definitely wanted your opinion because I know you work with a lot of, uh, I've seen influential young right. white males and stuff in your programs. Right. So it's just like, I, I don't understand the stigma that's being attached to this when both of you guys are pretty much in the community as a whole. Well, you, the funny you, thing about that too is that it's so interesting how everyone loves our culture. Mm. They love the culture. Mm, hold they, up. they may not say that again. Say it again. Whoa. Say it again. They love the culture, but they may right. not love us as people. Yeah. And it's interesting, like uh, she may see us or not, but one day I was training a child, he was not black, and, and he was talking and he said something, his mom came out and she dabbed. Like she just went right into it. And it was like, that's cool. Like I don't see no problem with it, but it can't be you're able to do this and you enjoy this. Right. But like we can't sit at the table. Mm. We can't have different conversations because we're black. But our culture and anything else that we've created and we do is mainstream. All of my kids who I train who are not black, they put me on music. Like when you're, you go to the, like the darkest, deepest website for mixtape, unreleased music. Oh, the white people are on it. And it's, it's, <laughs> right. You right. got you to respect. Like, hey, I, what's the name of that? Yeah, I need that. They, right. they and that's the whole culture vulture conversation that exists, yes. right? Yeah. Because right. we know that there's cultural appropriation and everything. And to your point, it's interesting to sort of see how our culture can be consumed, but then they don't stand for things like Colin kneeling and they right. knowing exactly why he's kneeling and not supporting right. That and especially because you're in athletics, sort of how have you had conversations with some of your students about what Colin is doing and working around that whole situation? I haven't yet because of uh, many of the kids, and now it's kind of shifted to a much younger audience who I don't think really understands it. And so they're, they're not in the conversation, and just yeah, yet. and they can't have that conversation. But I mean, it's very interesting how someone can protest here, and this is taken to a whole nother level. Right. He didn't do it, he didn't. He didn't, you know, he didn't even get a group of people behind him. He decided to kneel, and from the stories that's coming out, it was from a veteran who was white who told him this would be a better way to do it. So now there's all this uproar. But right. now there's, you know, it's interesting to see Jerry Jones. I really thought he nailed during the anthem, but from what I get now is that he did that before. They did yeah. this before that. So it's like some of the stuff is being staged. Like, you're not understanding that. We don't have a problem. It's not the flag. It's, it's a deeper issue. Don't don't minimize the, the real problem of right. what we're addressing. So right. to bring that back to the community, when we address issues, um, things get real petty real fast. Right. <laughs> um, and Miss Paul, I heard at your event, just tell me what I heard, there was a particular elected official <laughs> that their name was not in your brochure or in your program. Okay. And due to their name not being in the program, they decided not to speak and they left. Mm. Ooh. Really? Why do our people have to be so petty instead of being supportive right. at times? Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why people are petty. <laughs> <laughs> but I can give the backstory. Um, so 
uh, it wasn't a misprint. It wasn't an oversight. We did it did an invitation. We I like, never got. I like this clarity, by the way. Okay. I like the clarity. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> so it wasn't. I I'm really anal about my program book. So it wasn't a misprint. It wasn't an oversight. Yes, you sent about thirty emails. Of I about to say you, yes, my viewer speaker. You know, I sent a lot of emails. Right. So um, I. Um, we sent them an invitation. We never got confirmation that they accepted the invitation. So we were under the impression that they were not coming. And then the, um, their aide said that they were. And we made it clear that if they come, because I've worked for elected official, I know protocol. It's, I was like, well, you have to be mindful that this is what's going to happen. And I guess that wasn't translated to the, per, um, to the elected official. And then what happened, happened. So... So the reason why I bring that up is you're doing so much for the community. I think I told somebody this, and I'll tell you this on camera. I felt if your program was done on a Wednesday and Thursday and was supported by more businesses, you would triple the outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do great, but you do your event on the weekend, mm -hmm. which means the people that come to your event are very dedicated to being professionals and growing their network. Right. My question to you is, how, did, how does it feel to not be able to get the sponsorships that other programs and other events get mm -hmm. with, a, I would say, a more minimum impact? Um, of course, that's always a frustrating thing because you know, at the end of the day, you want you know that you have a quality product, you have Very a quality, quality yes. um, mission. It's not fluff. It's not just basically just to be out there for the sake of being out there. I want to... I want to be able to change kind of like the cycle of black professionals starting from scratch, coming out of college, five years basically being lost in like their pursuits and their goals. And yet you have non-black people who like they can get to their goals faster. Like I just think mm. so for me, I just was like I wanted to kind of change that that that's pattern that we have Purpose in our community. And yeah, so, mm. so for me, I feel like the purpose and the intent is very clear, it's very digestible, and yeah, so of course it gets frustrating when you find that people don't like people don't um, respond to it. But I'm also a believer that you know what's for me is for me, and I honestly feel that it's like this is just the journey that has to be. Like people see that no matter any hurdles, like you're gonna still see me a smile on my face, you're still gonna see me upbeat because. I know that this is my path. Like, I'm very confident of what my journey is. I don't look at other people and what they got to do. I'm very focused on what I'm supposed to accomplish. And I just keep myself aligned to, like, my spiritual growth and staying focused on that. I dig that. Speaking on purpose and intent, Brandon, you working in the community, why do you feel it's important to work with the youth? Kanash is working with professionals. You're working with the youth. Why do you feel that you need to be in that space? Honestly, because I was I was that child. I was lost. Uh, I got kicked out of second grade, and because I was kicked out of second grade, I was be able to go to a creative arts school. You were kicked out of school? Yeah, I was kicked out of second grade. I'm Damn not bad. telling that story. On <laughs> I was camera. gonna say you got a <laughs> little sidebar. You might want to like, talk, talk about, about that, that a little bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> unpack that. But unpack when that. I went to that school, they channeled that negative energy into art, mm. and art really changed my life. So there's a lot of kids that when we implement art or we do chess with these kids who are the worst kids in the school, but now they're focused on chess because they've taken all that energy and focused it on these pieces is the reason why. But then also I've seen tons of organizations throw tons of money at adults. That's way too late. Like, it, yes, they need help. Mm. But at the same time, too, if we fix, there's a quote, I can't say it now, but you know, you fix a child you, or you train up a child, mm -hmm. like okay, start them early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start them early and get them through the process. Now, you're not going to save everyone, but instead of pouring so much money into adults right. that you're trying to fix 20 years, 30 years of problems, start when they're three, start when they're four. Let them understand discipline, looking you in your eye, respecting you, calling you Mr. and Mrs. and sir instead of by first name. Yeah. So y'all have both of y'all have like dynamically different stories. And that's kind of why we wanted you on the stage at the same time, because as much as I understand fixing a third grader, I'm also the person that wants to focus on the 17 to 25 right. year olds because I feel they're lost. Right. And to me, not trying to be funny, I don't see myself as a young professional. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think by the time you're 35 to 40, if you haven't really figured it out, mm -hmm. you've been playing too many games. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't reinvent yourself and go another way, but 
you should be well on your way of that path. Yeah. So if you had to find that compromise between the two of you, what is the true demographic we should be focusing on? If you, if you had to make a choice collectively mm-hmm. together, what would be the true five, I guess, five to seven year span that we should focus on to make the most impact? But to clarify, I really, I know there's always a misconception because my team is young. We're, we don't, we're not the Young Black Professionals Network. We're the, we, we were intentional by calling the Black Professionals Network because our focus is really on a mindset. Mm. So for us, that's why our demographic is, seems to a lot of people broad, but it's really not in how we are intentional about how we market and with the channels we market to. Where we, we are looking for the people who would wake up on a Saturday morning to come and get and right. educating this. Right. That's a mindset that you have. You need to be motivated. You need to be a go-getter. Well, that means you, you just got to change all of South Florida, but that's a whole <laughs> other conversation. No, but it's like there is a niche of people who have that drive, who have that passion, who aren't on island time all throughout South Florida <laughs> and like, and who want to get it, who want to have the but same But you know what? Hunger. That's the thing. It's not even <laughs> island time. I mean, you could have a meeting with anybody in Miami. Anybody. If anybody. it rains, <laughs> they're 30 minutes late. It's like, but you knew the traffic was going to be this way like nothing is new i just don't understand why the laziness the disrespect and the lack of drive in south florida has just become accepted because that's what they sell right they sell you south beach yeah they they don't sell you everything else that other organizations talk about like miami is this new global city no one they don't sell you on being a global city they sell you on south beach yeah fountain blue Mm -hmm. live on sundays King of Diamond uh, Monday. That's what <laughs> they sell you, you on. That's for you. Like, you been a never while. hear it's been people a while. talking about going to doing business with. You never hear. I mean, I've never seen a commercial for Emerge. I've never seen a commercial for Me Black neither. Tech Week. Me yeah. neither. I've never seen a commercial for. If you haven't been to the Latin Builders event, mm-hmm. like that's where business happens. Yeah. So there's none of that is publicized. All of the all of like so. Other other uh, organizations like Miami Fellows and mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's Connect Four or something. Those are all secret societies mm-hmm. that they hide from TV because what they've been selling sells. That's mm-hmm. what Miami Miami sells you something and takes your money and then that's it. So do you think that Miami could be a city, a, a different type of city, if the narrative changed? So like New York, Great you question. know what you go to New York right. for. Yeah. You know what you go to Atlanta for. Atlanta sort of rebranded itself as a film place. A lot right. of people are doing. TV mm-hmm. and movies right. there. Too. Right. Tech, and yeah. right. Austin, you know what Austin is. So right. what would you say the narrative should be for Miami based on where we kind of wanted to go? Miami, we did a, I was a part of the Beacon Council Young Leaders Task Force and this guy, we did this great event and this guy spoke up and he was the only person who said it. And when he said this, everybody went, oh, Miami needs to grow up. Yeah. Miami has to grow up. Miami cannot continue to want to be a certain way, but not operate a certain way. We can't talk mm-hmm. about transit for I don't know how long. I've been here 17 years right. and we still have a transit problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we'll go through Miami Fellows, we'll go to Columbia, and they, they built a, a, the cable from the bottom of the ground to the top of the mountain. Yet we can't have transit. We can't fix transit. When I uh, graduated from UM, the job in De, uh, for Deloitte, in Miami was started at 50,000 in New York and other places it was mm-hmm. 70 or 80. Mm-hmm. But then yet we're building every building and charging so much rent. Like we can't try to be New York of the South, but then we don't have certain things in New York. Right, not really have the actual structure to right. support that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny you say the whole thing with uh, Miami needs to grow up. And Kanasha, this is kind of to your defense. If people like BPN digital grass if we stop doing events like this everybody would say they miss it <laughs> of course right. of course <laughs> but when you do events like this, you gotta get this support. everybody has a reason why they couldn't show up right right i've had and we've done it before i've done the exact same events in atlanta in philadelphia in new york and the response from people that i don't know people that i don't see from complete strangers this same event would draw three times the amount of people of in any other city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of what is it about Miami that this comfortable element of being lazy has warped us from the growth that we actually need? And yeah, I'm getting personal because I just want to put this out here. A little fun fact. Everybody 
calls and says either between the rain, the location, the heat, that they won't come out and support these events. Right. The same people that tell me why they can't come to this event are the same people that tell me their complaints about not being able to grow their business or make money. Preach. Exactly. Now, while we're making it through that, everybody that's come here, we normally get this exact response. I'm so glad I came. Right. I didn't know anything like this in Miami was going on, and I've made so many connections, I'm coming back. So how do we have a city that does nothing but complain about the things they want, but then won't turn around and support the things that they've demanded? It just comes down to that we just have a, one, we've accepted the mediocrity. Like, you know, mm. we've basically made it thing like a status quo. Like Mediocrity is the status quo of Miami. No, it's so like. So if we had a status update, <laughs> it would be like, I'm on mediocre. Yes. That's mediocre so, is it's so, real. It's so, it's so <laughs> jacked up, but it's so true. <laughs> So true. No, but it's like we just have to call it what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think at the end of the day, I have been in so many like forums, group chats where people are like, oh, they can't find a job. They don't know who are mentor. Like they, um, it's so hard to connect with people. I don't know where other black professionals are. And then when you have, and, and I believe it for my event before, this was conversations that happened before I even did BPN. And there is like YPN who were doing events. And you had Urban League that were doing events. You had all these groups that were doing stuff stuff to help kind of like help them and they weren't going to that but if it was a party or if it was a, a social I saw all of them there and I was like everybody. wasn't you just complaining about not having a <laughs> Look, job and some of them yeah. social networks was Tinder live boy and the, I'm and the, if you right. were single you just went to a networking event right but that's priorities that's no right. it, is. That's and priorities. That's it is so that's what I said it's at the end of the day that's why for me when people ask like oh are you like for the young I correct them I'm like no I'm not I'm looking for a mindset because I do believe that you can be late to the party you could be 40 years old and then yet yeah, being stuck in the Miami system you you were caught up in partying and, and right. hanging out and then you didn't click that motivation and passion in you so then when you finally it clicks in you I want you to be tapped in and I want to be able to assist you in getting the resources right. and like the, and link you to the opportunities to help you go to your goal as if you weren't behind mm. and also you know it's like you mentioned it's priorities it's like just this weekend you can use this weekend for example uh, at some points it rained uh, the COVID center is mm -hmm. far <laughs> I actually almost went south and then I looked at my information I went north but to see the amount of people in there was, it was a good amount of people, but it wasn't enough. Right. Mm -hmm. There was the I Am Africa party at Cafeina, which That's rained. Tonight. It's an outside party. Right. Everybody was, just, there was everybody who was African or any type of African descent mm -hmm. in that party, you know, living life. But it's the same, like you said, it's the same people who talk about, oh, I can't progress here. Or I don't have a mentor. I don't know things. No, it's like when you want something, you find it. It's amazing mm -hmm. how many people will text you something that they could easily Google, but they don't really care. They just want a yeah. quick answer. You exactly. can Google that. Me and Toya have talked about this. We've had people that come from out of town, and they literally say, I'm willing to stay here because all I got to do is a little bit more oh, yeah. to beat oh, everybody else. Transients are winning here. <laughs> this oh breeds entrepreneurs. Transients don't. They just, like, literally, everyone says that we get the best of other, like, regions but honestly we get the regions that we get the people not saying that they're not hard working but they literally come here and learn really quickly that they don't have to grind as hard like they did in new york it, right. la atlanta they coasting like you literally gotta do like maybe five degrees up more <laughs> just to like it's like our, right. it's like our right. all-star team is rookies to everybody yes. else <laughs> That's right. right. so toy you want you start off with the quick six so that way i can close it out oh, quick man. six what, should, what would be your superhero it? alter ego name? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh my! Whoever wants to go first. You pick a superhero, or a you have to pick a name. You. you what would your one. superhero yeah. name be? Uh, you go first. <laughs> I like Phoenix because I was a big Jean Grey fan. Okay. So it's like I liked her. That Who? Jean Grey Jean from Grey. the oh, X Men. Okay. X -Men. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So she when she transformed into the Phoenix, I'm a big comic person. X Men. Wow, so, you really went there. That's a I good did. one. I mm did. -hmm. <laughs> so that would be showing it. your nerd side. I appreciate that. Uh, same on the Marvel comics. I picked Black Panther. All right, all right. Yeah. Ready for the movie? Look, ready. Yeah, ready. Ready. <laughs> ready. So, uh, just because we're gonna have to get to it later, what's your drink of choice? Um, gentleman's Jack Mojito. Gentleman's Jack. 
Miss Chapman. I'm fancy. <laughs> no, that's complicated. That's not even fancy. It that's... tastes so delicious, I promise. I don't even know if we nice. can make that here. All right. <laughs> B. Uh, mine is uh, a mix. It's Hennessy, Grand Marnier, Pea Snaps, and Cranberry. See, he's okay. complicated. <laughs> Both complicated, both. <laughs> Y'all right. want the whole damn bar. Y'all just can't have a drink. <laughs> hey, let me get everything you got on the top shelf, put it into a mixer, and put some ice on it. Okay. <laughs> Where do you want to see Miami in five years? Oh, yeah. Five minutes. Shit. Five or that. <laughs> um, I would love for us to kind of see, uh, you know, a more robust um, and it matured um, professional networking um, situation in Miami where basically anything that you're trying and also more innovative like if you're looking for something it could be easily that there's a space that you can find it get your information and be able to make you know fundamental connections that housing is um, handled situation handled mm. I would love for that to there be a real conversation not even conversation no more like we see ground Breaking for affordable housing. Fix them damn appraisals. You'll have affordable housing. That's why I no, talked about it earlier. Yeah. Trade investment property. You got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house appraising for four seventy five. You gonna jack up the industry. But go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. It's y'all uh, quick six. It ain't about. Yeah, me. I mean, I, I think as well. Um, I just would like Miami to mature. I like us to finally, at some point, fix transit. Uh, I would like to also let's not build these. Uh, monster shopping centers mm. walking distance from Doop each other it. when they're right. building them in the communities that can't afford yeah. that shopping center. And let's look at, you know, really uplifting everybody in the community. We cannot say we're a world city or a global city, mm -hmm. but we're really and not. Cherry picking. All right. All right. So number four, if you had to define Miami, are we Xfinity, Comcast, <sighs> Dish Network? U-verse. <laughs> or U-verse. <laughs> What would Miami be? What is that box that you get from like sales to sales? Per Roku, uh, Roku? Roku box? It might be the Roku box. Miami is Roku. <laughs> wow. Amazon stick. I love Miami. I so y'all wouldn't even I, give them a, a cable in my, <laughs> Look, can I just say cut the cord? <laughs> <laughs> we going rogue. No, I love Miami. I'm, I'm one of the few true Miamians born and raised here. Um, so I have seen the evolution. I want, in my heart. That wasn't a lot to look at. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Don't Sorry. do us. Don't, Don't do us, my na Miami natives. Look, I travel the world, so I still think that Miami has all. It's everything. a young city. It's only it a hundred-year-old city. And it's I a think it's city. growing quite fast for a city that is young. It's right. just like the problem is that we we're just not creating the infrastructure that we right. need to kind of sustain our growth. And I just think that just comes from a maturity and being more intentional of where we put our resources. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'll say you verse. I like you verse. You verse is good service. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shout out to AT&T in the building. <laughs> Are they going to give you a discount? Trying to get sponsors. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Xfinity Comcast, I love you. I go. thank you for the discount. Look, so what's your soundtrack? Give us a, the, when you're walking down the street or you're walking into a meeting, what, do you, what song are you hearing in your head? Mm, to a, a meeting? Or wherever. What's your soundtrack? Oh. You need to get into the zone. What's your theme music? What? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. It can be an album or it can be a song. A song. Oh, I got it. You can go ahead. My song is The Prelude by Jay-Z. Um, just how he talks about being in corporate America, which I thought I wanted to be, and mm. doing all of that, and then stepping out on your own. Um, that's That would be the song. And then there's... Uh, uh, there's uh, Ghetto Children by Juvenile. And then that's um, right, New Orleans, all in your blood. Yeah, so that's probably my two songs that kind of just mellow me out before I go into a meeting or stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because I think when going to meetings now, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of war right now. It is. Like yeah. you're trying to get. There's so many people after nonprofit dollars. There's so many yeah. people mm -hmm. after city, uh, city contracts grants. Mm -hmm. and grants. And there's also people who had a meeting prior to you even coming in that meeting that you didn't know about. Shout right. out to the Knight Foundation so, for believing in us, though. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Go ahead, Kanasha. What's, what's the song? Um, I like Monster with Kanye, Jay-Z. Oh. Like, that song always gets me hype. I like. I also, also listen to Drake, Up All Night. I feel like that's like my team anthem. Okay, I think so about mine. <laughs> we got one minute. We're going to close it out. Five years from now, both of y'all in the perfect place. Miami Herald writes a story about you. What's the perfect headline? What does the headline read from the Miami Herald? 
Black Professional Summit brings down Barack Obama. Wow, that's a good one. Black he Professional brings. Summit brings down Barack Obama. Keynote. That means y'all got some real money. He ain't cheap. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. uh, five years from now, when they write that story, just say he was a dreamer and made that dream come true. I don't know if they can fit all that, but... I hope he didn't that's die. It. That's, that's like it. you died, Brandon. Huh? That'll it's work. Like a- hey, he ain't got to be dead. He just fulfilled the prophecy. <laughs> no, I didn't die. I mean, I... I and you can see you dreaming. Our company's called yeah, Dreams. Yeah, right. dream. yeah. He accomplished right. his dream. Yeah. Steven Spielberg got a headline like that, and he ain't dead. You're right. He was a dreamer. He was a kid that wanted right. to make movies. Right. And you do one it. dream, and you do another Keep one. Keep doing it. Keep it moving. So... We know the bar can't make the drinks that they asked for, but won't y'all buy them a drink when they get off the stage? And let's give a round of applause to our guests tonight. Yes, thanks for Thank coming. You. And Thank once again, this has been another episode of Tech Beats and Bites, so we'll catch you guys next week, and let's get into the overtime. We'll talk to you later.